ओके कैन एवरीवन हियर मी कैन आई गेट सम काइंड ऑफ यू नो इन अ चैट और यू कैन से समथिंग okay so now that if you are not able to hear me and you don't mm, okay, so we'll start maybe if you don't hear me you can say in the middle so welcome uh, so this is the npt uh, this is an nptl initiative where uh, uh, we pmr scholars are actually going to solve some previous year questions week by week So once in a week uh, I'll be coming, and then once every day I think one of the scholars is going to take one topic and solve two questions on them, or get previous year questions. Okay, so today is uh, my first session, and we'll be discussing about hydrology. So I'm going to tell you what are the topics that we are going to discuss, and uh, based on that uh, you can decide whether this is going to be beneficial for you or not. so today we are going to discuss hydrology and specifically the two questions are going to be related to orton's method of infiltration and uh, some basic concept of unit hydrogram okay so someone has raised the hand yes yes sir then you can speak Oh, good evening, sir. Yeah. Good Your voice is not audible, sir. Uh, oh, okay. It it is so much of some disturbance is, is there. The voice is very low. Sir. Okay. One minute. Is it audible now? Somewhat, sir. Okay. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. Wait a second. so probably now uh, it might be better can anyone let me know if it is better now or not how about now is it better now okay and uh, so yeah sajid uh, is it better now what do you think no one else is responding uh, no sir it is at uh, very low pinch sir it is at very low pinch let me see the seconds how about the one ah okay how about now Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Oh, okay. this one. Yeah. Thanks, Sajid. Yeah. So, for today's session, we are going to discuss these two uh, questions related to these two topics. That is Horton's method and uh, some basic concept related to unit hydrograph. And in the end, what I will do, I will since this is uh, we are only allowed to do gate previous year questions, but you know from the interviews of all the toppers, so, uh, we see that. Uh, they also was solving some esc questions so i will just select some of those questions which are in line with these you know some some kind of relation is there and then based on that we will uh, i have selected some questions and we'll look at them also okay so let's start uh one more thing see uh, the, uh, in the nptel portal only the solutions will be uploaded so i will solve the questions and after that i will take your doubts so then i will cut out the part where i am solving the questions and then uh, you know we, we can refer to that but the interaction that we are going to have throughout this session is going to be uploaded in uh, the youtube channel that is uh, based on every scholar will have a youtube channel on that on their channel this uh, 
interaction will be uploaded so for me it is by the name antrix npgl and dash pmr so if you want to see the whole interaction you can go if you want to see only the solutions you can go to the uh, nptl portal paper. okay so the first question uh, based on gate 2023 set 1 question number 61 we are given uh, so let's read down the question first horton's equation So, in Horton's equation fitted to the infiltration data for a soil, the initial infiltration capacity is 10 mm per hour. Final infiltration capacity is 5 mm per hour. And the exponential decay constant is 0.5 per hour. Assuming the infiltration takes place uh, at capacity rate, the total infiltration depth in mm for, uh, from a uniform storm of duration 12 hour is Okay, so there are a lot of things in this uh, question. Some, some of things, some of the comments are actually also addressing the limitations that we have in Horton's law. So let's let's look at what Horton's law tries to tell us. So you all would have seen this kind of graph when we look at Horton's law, and this is uh, infiltration rate. Let's write it as mm per hour and this is time in let's say hours so when the soil is dry when the soil is dry and we pour some water on top of it that water quickly goes down right because uh, and uh, as as long as and as we keep on adding more and more water what we observe from experiments specifically if you want to know the experiment that we uh, do to get these data points to fit the parameters for uh, this Horton's model is the double ring infiltrometer where we have two rings uh, we add water in uh, inside both outside and inside of the ring and we take the readings only from the inside ring so we will discuss about this concept uh, some other time but this is the experiment which uh, gives us these points so basically we measure the infiltration rate from this experiment and plot it and try to fit the model parameters. So what we see that the infiltration rate is very high in the start and then it exponentially declines to a constant value. That constant value is actually the saturation hydraulic conductivity of of what of the soil so it can be written as kc for uh, your uh, horton's law you will see that uh, so you will see that it is actually written by fc so it is it doesn't matter we can give any term but the thing is what we want to show now is that now the soil is saturated and whatever water you are putting into it, let's assume that it is a infinitely deep you know, soil layer. Now whatever water you are putting into it is just coming and going out or going into the bottom. It is not getting stored here. When there was a capacity, when the soil was initially dry and the water is getting stored here on the soil, then infiltration rate is very high. But when the full soil column gets wet now then the infiltration rate is just the conductivity means the water just comes and goes out or in the, in the infinite case it doesn't go out it just keeps on going and you know, filling the soil column below okay so what we have in this question is the initial uh, infiltration capacity or inf infiltration rate and then the final so if in this question they were to ask you what is the saturation hydraulic conductivity you can just directly give this yeah so this that is the final uh, infiltration capacity and exponential decay is 0.5 so if you remember the Horton equation that is infiltration rate at any time t is given by fc that is nothing but the final infiltration rate or saturation hydraulic conductivity plus f naught minus fc into e power minus kt 
F naught is the initial uh, infiltration capacity, F C is then again the final and this E power minus K into T, the K here is nothing but the exponential decay constant. And keep in mind that the time we are going to put inside this equation is going to be having like since the k is in per hour, 0.5 per hour, so this time has to be in hour. So if in place of 12 hours, they were to give you half a day, you have to first convert it into hours and then put it in this function. So what have they asked us? They have asked us the infiltration, uh, the total infiltration. So the total infiltration is given by, so this is infiltration rate. So you just integrate this for our duration. So 0 to 12, Fc is, uh, let me see, 5. So let me write it here for your reference. F0 is 10, Fc is 5, K is, oh, sorry about this, yeah, K is 0 0.5. So let's write our equation. We have 5 plus 10 minus 5, 5. Exponential minus minus 0 0.5 into t dt. So when we integrate this, we get 5t plus 5. Integration of e power uh, kx will be integration of kx divided by k. So what we have is power minus 0 0.5t divided by minus 0 0.5. And then the limit 0, 12, 0, 12. So let's put the value 5 into 12 plus. So let's divide it here and make our lives easy. Uh, 5 divided by 0.5 is 10. And since we have a minus 0 0.5, let's take it. Let's make it minus 10. And then uh, we'll put limit here. So e power minus 0.5 into 12, so e power minus 6 minus e power minus 0, that is 0, which will be 1. So we have 60 minus 10 into e power minus 6 minus 1. Okay, so now one uh, friendly tip that I want to give you all is that when you are actually practicing, since uh, at least uh, at least in the last two months of your gate preparation and you are solving questions, use rough paper, uh, the same that you get in gate and try to use the gate calculator. So sit in front of your computer or download the gate calculator in your Android mobile and try to do these numericals in that calculator. because. You know, I have, I'm speaking from experience when I say this that uh, I didn't do it and when I was, I was giving my gate exam, I was getting a lot of the things wrong. Luckily, I noticed it because the calculations didn't make sense. So you practice that because otherwise it is going to consume a lot of your time. Just uh, for example, I'll tell you that when you want to uh, uh, write e power 6, in our normal calculators, first we'll uh, click the, you know, press the button for exponential, then we'll press the button 6. But in gate calculator, you have to p first press 6 and then when you uh, click on X exp button, then it gives you e power 6. So uh, something like that, you have to get familiar with the way that gate calculator works. Okay, so the final expression for, the so final solution for this is, 10 power, e power minus 6 is very small, so this will be uh, 1 minus some very small number, so near about like in say 0.99, so this will be 10, so the whole thing comes out to be approximately 70 mm. So this is the answer for the question, that was numerical answer type, the answer is 70 mm in our 12 hour duration. Okay, so uh, did anyone, everyone understand? Is there any doubt in this question? If you have sir, can, uh, can we have a direct formula to get this answer, sir? I have a little bit doubt in integration, sir. Okay, yeah, we can have. So this is the expression. 
for uh, what we'll do is we'll just give we'll do the integration here itself and some of the people if you want to remember the formula the best way to do it is to derive it so we'll do it here so the total infiltration is fc into t plus f naught minus fc minus k into e power minus k t so this is your formula okay thank you so much sir okay okay so yeah so one thing in yeah. the last step you said the 60 minus 10 into e power minus 6 minus 1 So oh, okay. yeah, my bad, my is bad. Yeah, so this will be uh, very less number, so it should be minus point uh, nine nine. Yeah, thanks, sir. Uh, so I couldn't. Uh, Anuj, right? Anuj uh, asked that question. Yeah, thanks, Anuj. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, it should be uh, minus point nine nine. Okay. Okay, so if there is no doubt, we will go to the next question. Good. So the sec uh, next question is: It will test your basics. Uh, so uh, very less, uh, uh, very less. These questions are asked. Uh, these conceptual kind of questions are asked in GATE, but they have asked in twenty two thousand fourteen set two question number nineteen. So now this is uh, coming to hydrograph. so we'll see some more examples of infiltration but uh, first let's finish the requirements that are put by npt okay uh, an isolated 3 hour rainfall event on a small catchment produces a hydrograph peak and a point of inflection on the falling rim of the hydrograph at 7 hours and 8.5 hours respectively after the start of the rainfall assuming no losses and no base flow contribution the time of concentration in hours for this catchment is approximately how much okay so uh first let's talk about some of the things that are said here uh yeah so when we say there is no loss from the rainfall and there is no base flow contribution then what we are trying to say here is that this uh, hydrograph or whatever reading that you are going to get is your direct runoff hydrograph or unit hydrograph in case you know the excess precipitation is 1 cm so you understand when we have no losses means no infiltration loss also and uh, no base flow contribution that means there was no additional flow in the stream so it, the hydrograph was not is not like this but where this is the base flow usually if we have seen this will be the base flow it is saying there is no base flow that means it is bringing down the hydrograph starting from zero and ending to zero and there is no losses that means whatever the rainfall occurred it didn't infiltrate into the soil all of it went to the runoff so what we have here is some information regarding direct runoff hydrograph okay now let's see what we have been asked so let's draw a rough sketch so we know now how the graph will look like and uh, this is a 3 hour rainfall so usually we'll so we'll draw the rainfall like this in our uh, books so we'll also stick to this so it is a 3 hour so first let me draw this this is time let's say in hours and this is uh, for hydrograph this will be flow rate let's say it is in meters cube per second and this is uh, rainfall intensity our rainfall effective rainfall hydrograph so this duration is 3 hours so we have shown it here Okay, so one uh, one bonus question. Let's uh, let me ask you this. Let's say this is a unit hydrograph, three hour unit hydrograph. What? So one more question can be asked, no? From this same thing, it can be nineteen A or nineteen B. Usually they will do in uh, sometimes in gate they will do this. So if I were to ask you if this is this information that has been given to you, 
is for the unit hydrograph what will be the intensity of effective precipitation what do you guys think what will be the intensity One centimeter per three hour. Hmm. Yes, one centimeter per three hour. So, what should I write there? Tell me a number. You are going on the right track, Darini. No need to. Point yeah. three three centimeter per hour. Very good. Very good. So, if everyone else knew and they didn't want to say. it is fine but if you didn't knew if you didn't know this and uh, that's why you were silent then there is a problem and you need to fix that okay uh yeah shaikh uh, do you want to say something okay i'm going to mute shaikh because he's not saying anything okay yeah so what else have we been given here we have been given that the peak hydrograph peak occurs at 7 hour so the peak occurs at 7 hour that means this is 7 hour and the inflection point on the falling limb is at 8.5 hours so that means here the inflection point here so basically uh why do the hydrograph so if you remember from your basics of uh, mathematics that uh, inflection point is a point let me change the colors to that it is highlighted inflection point in a graph is a point where hydrograph start uh, very any curve starts to change its nature so if this is the nature with uh, convex and then after some time it change it becomes concave then this point is called inflection point so if in a hydrograph that we have drawn here this is the nature convex nature and after this point it becomes like a concave nature this is the point what we call as inflection point and the distance of this point or the time to reach this point is has been given to us as 8.5 hours why is this important this is important because if uh, this is the point or this is the time in the stream flow which represents that all of the rainfall that you you know even the farthest point in your watershed this is let's say your watershed is has now contributed to your stream flow and the outflow so let me so this is the actual figure so yeah let me use this figure for more clarity so this is the unit period that is tr for us that was 3 hours the time to peak so the source i have given here it is uh, from ragunath 2006 it's a book and uh, the time to peak for us is given as 7 hours then this time to inflection point is given as 8.5 hours so yeah let me just you know uh, tell you the concept why this changes and how it is related to actually the time of concentration let's say you have a watershed here is an outlet and this is the big watershed okay so for uh, any hydrograph when we draw we assume that for the unit hydrograph at least we assume that uh, the rainfall occurs uniformly throughout the watershed so the time of concentration is the time which the water drops which one water drop takes which has fallen on the most extreme end of the watershed so the time of concentration in simple language let's say is the time that this water droplet which has fallen on the most extreme end of the watershed takes to come from that point to the outlet that is the time of 
concentration and what happens is when that has occurred the graph starts to change its nature okay so that's how this is related to your uh, inflection point because now it, it is now trying to uh, start uh, starting to change its nature and if you look at this figure carefully let me erase these things based on the values i will write the values on the left side e c sorry time to peak is 7 hours and uh, time to inflection is 8.5 hours the unit period of the effective viewing for duration is 3 hours can you guys based on this information and this graph tell me what is going to be the time of concentration which is here see all the things are available even some extra information also has been given to us which we don't actually need Five point five, very good. So Hari has uh, answered it correctly. So for those who couldn't get, let's uh, look at this uh, graph. So what we have been given is the time to this inflection on the falling limb is eight point five, right? And what is the time uh, concentration time in the graph? If you look at it visually, it is the time from the end of your effective precipitation. to the inflection point and what is the time of our effective precipitation that is 3 hours so we get the time of concentration 8.5 minus 3 that is 5.5 now uh, some of the books i have seen they have solved it a little incorrectly but you uh, know now we know how the what is the correct way to solve this question okay so the answer for this will be d Okay, so is there any doubt in this? So why they give one seven hours? Ah, yeah, you just that's what they will give sometimes more information to confuse you, or or maybe you can solve the same question using the seven hours also. So you know, if you 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 can say that okay, this is my one minute, some okay, this is my seven hours. and this is my 8.5 so what is the difference the difference is 1.5 and then you add this 1.5 to the time to lag you know and or some something like that you can use it somehow but the easiest way is to do 8.5 minus 3 i don't see any you know uh, direct way to use the time to peak but sometimes they will give you additional information just to confuse you also okay thank you sir okay Uh, yes sir is there any relation between the lag time or and the concentration time yeah so uh, there are actually complex formulas but there is an estimate that uh, time to, uh, lag time that is let's say let's call it l is equal to 0.6 uh, the concentration time there is an estimate uh, you know that we use i think in we use this in uh, our uh, when we will discuss the synthetic hydrograph we'll discuss this so this is an approximation that uh, is being that is used uh, sometimes when we want to get the lag time from the concentration time uh, and sir uh, how do you relate that uh, relation in the given water shed you drawn sorry oh that yes, relation sir. no so yeah. as i said see the, there is separate equation or separate expression for very big expression for lag time and there is separate expression that that actually depends on the watershed you cannot have a single you know single relation see if you have a different watershed different kind of watershed then your time of concentration is going to change because if you remember what i said was the time of concentration is the time the water uh, the water droplet takes to come from this extreme point to the outlet so let's say if we have a grass field 
then the water will take more time why because it can get infiltrated you know most most of the water can get infiltrated on the way but when you have concrete road or urban area so the water will quickly get to your uh, outlet so there this formula for time for concentration is not very fixed kind of formula and it will change it will change with based on your uh, watershed so there is no like we cannot relate it straight away we have to use this kind of approximation that is 0.6 tc that too it's only valid for some cases and when it is valid they will mention it that you know scs uh, synthetic hydrograph you can you have to use to solve this question hello yeah yes sir oh thank you sir oh okay so now that we have met our requirements let's go so, do some more questions that have been asked in some exam in previous years oh my god what is this ah oh, that have been asked in some exams in previous years but uh, you know that are not in gate okay so the first question which one of the following constitute the basic assumption of unit hydrograph theory so who can answer this question first so there are two things only whether it is a linear response or non linear response whether it is time invariance or time variance so who has read uh, the basics of or yeah the basics of unit hydrograph so someone has answered d pallavi gachale and someone has answered 3 and c okay okay the three was c so one answer is right and one answer is wrong sir how can i get to recorded class so uh, this uh, so in the gate portal i will be uploading these two solutions to the questions that we discussed the previous year gate questions but this whole class you can get on the i have to upload on the youtube channel so they have asked us to make our youtube channel and we have to upload this video in that channel so that for my channel will be antriksh nptel pmr you can get the recording of the whole class in that if you want only the get previous year questions you can get in the get portal okay so yeah so as i saying one question one answer was right one was wrong so the correct answer is it is time invariance and linear response okay so what do we mean by this time invariance see uh, here if you see this question related to your unit hydrograph it was never mentioned that the soil was initially dry initially wet was there any other rainfall event that happened before this right so what we mean to say by by that is if at all when ever at any point of time if some rainfall occurs in this watershed it is going to produce one hydrograph if the same rainfall event occurs when the let's say first time it occurred when the soil was dry it produced same hydrograph second time same rainfall event same excess precipitation same duration of precipitation occurred when the soil was wet it will still produce the same hydrograph so what we are trying to say is the time doesn't matter time uh, when we say time basically uh, the soil is wet because there was a precipitation before this right so what we are uh, strictly trying to say is it doesn't matter whether 
there was a precipitation before or the before. soil was flooded before this the we are going to assume that the watershed is going to produce same amount of outflow at the outlet right that is time invariance it doesn't matter when when the precipitation occurs it can be that see it can be that the soil was initially dry and some precipitation happened and it produced this much outflow right but now the soil is has become wet technically speaking the infiltration of this precipitation should be less and the corresponding uh, outflow or corresponding outflow at the outlet should be more right if again this same precipitation occurs but that's not the case we are going to say no it is going to be same that is time invariance and this is one of the principles that you actually use uh, in some of the questions that we will take in future classes uh, not in this session I have not selected that uh, question if you remember if you recall from your classes BTEC classes is that you have uh, unit one unit hydrograph you will be given and then they say that uh, the precipitation occurred for first hour three centimeter second hour some like uh, four centimeter now produce the direct run of hydrographs so what usually we'll do, we'll do this thing only, we'll stack them and we'll add them. What we uh, don't realize when we are doing that is we are neglecting that previously some rainfall has happened. So the hydrograph values should actually be a little bit changed. When we do that, you know, very easily we are actually using this assumption of time invariance. And another assumption that is this linear response, what does that mean? So that is related to again the same question. Let's go to the same example question that I gave. They have given you one unit hydrograph in the question. And then they say the same precipitation occurred for first hour. It occurred for three centimeter excess precipitation. Second hour it occurred for like uh, same duration, but uh, it occurred for 5 uh, centimeter excess precipitation. So when we are given this thing, 1 hour, 1 hour, and then they say, give us the direct run of hydrograph, right? What do we do? We, since we have a unit hydrograph, uh, so the excess precipitation for that is 1 centimeter. For the, th uh, for the first precipitation event, where the excess precipitation is 3 centimeter, we multiply the ordinates by 3. We multiply the ordinates by 3 and just get one run of hydrograph. What we are doing there? We are assuming that if one centimeter excess precipitation rainfall happens, then you know the let's say yeah the volume of uh, the total runoff is some q or let is some v. And when we multiply the ordinates by 3 centimeter for this actual example that we have given what we simply say that okay if there is 3 centimeter excess precipitation the total volume of the outlet is 3V that is what we are assuming whenever we do carelessly just multiply it by 3 and then plot it and then for 5 centimeter what we do we multiply by 5 and then we again plot it you know and then we add and get our uh, final direct run of hydrograph what we are doing is we are assuming these two things one thing is time invariance it doesn't matter if there was a rainfall event before and another is linear response that if you have one hour sorry one centimeter excess precipitation then you have total uh, outflow volume of b and when you have three centimeter excess precipitation the total outflow volume is 3v and similarly in case of five centimeter is this 5v I hope I was able to, you know, uh, explain this in the way I expected it to, you know, uh, you to understand it. If you have any doubt in regarding this, you can tell me. So based on the soil condition, it was very specific. Yeah, see, that's what unit hydrograph does not care what is your soil condition. In the assumption that we say is time invariant. 
it says uh, if you practically speaking if there was a rainfall just half an hour before then uh, if a rainfall occurs again then the soil is wet it should not uh, the infiltration capacity will be reduced right then it should have more runoff like what happens in chennai when water falls uh, like the when continuous continuously water keeps on falling then the stre uh, streets start getting flooded right why because now the soil is not able to infiltrate that much so whatever rain is falling it is coming to the roads it is filling the channel and we have a flood unit hydrograph says i don't care i will give you same amount of volume for outflow whenever the rainfall occurs Okay, okay. So let's go to the next question. So yeah, this is actually if you have done some questions where you are trying to get the unit hydrograph from uh, trying to get the unit hydrograph from a given. outflow measurement with time let's say you measured the outflow at this watershed outlet with time you know and you plotted it and you have actually done some kind of uh, questions related to this then you will be able to answer it so basically it is saying that what is what are the steps that uh, you take from what are the steps that you perform to get to the unit hydrograph to you know uh, from this flood hydrograph so first uh, not the steps i am just reading the uh, reading by number i am not telling the answer so first point it is written is estimating the surface runoff in depth estimating the surface runoff in volume separating base flow dividing surface runoff ordinates by depth of runoff okay so i will again wait for a while let's see if you can recall by steps what a what is the way to approach this problem okay so i don't have any answer yet Hmm. Do I have anyone in chat saying something? B. Okay. Was it for now? Okay. So we have B. That is two, three, four, one. Let's look at B. What does B say? Estimating the surface runoff in volume. Then. Uh. Okay. So we have D, C, and D. B, C, D. Only A is left. Anyone for A? Okay, so Darni is for A also. Okay, let's see. We have A, B, C, D. So now that we have all the options, I will tell the right answer first. Okay, so as I said, this is base flow. Uh, so no, not base flow. This is the flood hydrograph. So we are measuring the outflow in the uh, outflow at the outlet of your watershed. what we will have in this outflow we will have base flow also what is base flow base flow is basically whatever water is was already there in your stream or whatever it is coming from the underground so when we want unit hydrograph or direct runoff hydrograph first step is to remove this base flow or it should not have been zero here it should have gone like this and then first step is to remove this base flow so then what are all the options that are gone separate base flow so b and d are gone a and c are left so let's see what is the second option estimating the surface runoff in volume so let me ask you this question this thing surface if uh, from now that we have separated the base flow we have what is called as direct runoff hydrograph right and from direct runoff hydrograph if you remember 
how did we get unit hydrogram we got by dividing the volume no no, no i don't know who that was but uh, we don't divide it by volume we divide the ordinates of the direct run of hydrograph by the effect uh, depth of the ex, uh, effective precipitation so we need depth here now if we all now know the direct run of hydrograph and we need to get the depth so we we don't care uh, no uh, if we get the depth before itself like in the c option why uh, why do we need to calculate the volume why do we need to go to the volume because if we directly can calculate the depth in this case this is the step that you are no this is the uh, way that you are going to go so this is fundamentally wrong how do you get the depth actually is by calculating the volume so let me tell you how we get that depth so this is a direct run of hydrograph now from this i will translate it to here this is okay so it's a mistake so this is your direct run of hydrograph who can tell me what does the area of the direct run of hydrograph tell us who can tell me? total volume of precipitation total volume of effective precipitation correct so just effective uh, word you didn't mention but effective precipitation and you know keep in mind that effective i am saying now that only effective is missing but it is a very big deal even if in some iit interview if you are going and you don't mention the word effective then it is a, uh, it's going to cost you some marks so it will give us the total volume of effective precipitation that is the volume which you divide by your uh, area of the watershed to get the effective precipitation depth okay so someone is asking koi dharani yes dharani no sir uh, you raised your hand so i thought you wanted to ask something okay cool so you uh, calculate the area of this direct run of hydrograph and you get the volume of effective precipitation so then you have done the step number 2 and then when you divide the volume of effective precipitation by the watershed area you get the effective depth of your uh, no uh, no depth of your effective precipitation that is the step number 1 and when you get the effective depth you divide your ordinates of the direct run of hydrograph by that effective depth and whatever curve that you are left with now is your unit hydrograph what we are doing by dividing this actually we are making the effective precipitation which was you no know, uh, the total excess precipitation 1 1 cm so now if you were to uh, calculate the area of this particular uh, the new a uh, unit hydrograph that you have gotten you will get some volume and if you were to divide this volume by the watershed area what you will get you will get the excess precipitation of 1 cm okay so this is the step which we usually adopt in uh, the process to get our direct run of uh, sorry unit hydrograph from the flood hydrograph Does everyone understand this? Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. When we divide the uh, uh, when we divide the volume. Uh, sorry. When we divide the uh, divided by the area, then hmm. we get uh, we get a depth, na effective depth. And yes. Said, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I said something. Not something else. If I said something else, my apologies. We get the depth of effective precipitation. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. So now let's go to the next question. Hmm. This is also going to check some of the basic concepts. Let's read this question. 
which of the following principles relate to unit hydrograph hydrograph of direct runoff the hydrographs of direct runoff due to effective rainfall of equal durations have same time base effective rainfall so what does this say hydrograph of direct runoff so as i as we have seen here this is the direct runoff hydrograph it will start from zero end at zero okay so meher wants to ask something yes meher okay so we'll continue so what this point is saying is uh, the hydrograph of direct runoff that is nothing but direct runoff hydrograph due to effective rainfall of equal duration have same uh, time base so if we have a direct if we have a direct runoff hydrograph for an excess precipitation of 3 hours and if we have a direct runoff hydrograph let's say this this time effective precipitation depth was let's say 1 cm and if we have another direct runoff hydrograph for again for effective rainfall period of 3 hours but this time the effective precipitation was 2 cm it is saying that the base time which is the time it takes from start of uh, starting from 0 to the end of 0 is saying that this will remain same so that is what first first point is that effective rainfall is not uniformly distributed within the duration so it is saying that in your direct runoff hydrograph if you remember this effective rain, effective precipitation we plot it is saying that it is not uniformly distributed but it is non uniformly distributed second point is saying that this is true okay third point is saying it is uh, effective uh, rainfall is uniformly distributed throughout the whole area of the drainage basin so if we this is your watershed this is your outlet third point is saying that the rainfall occurs uniformly throughout your watershed fourth point hydrograph of direct runoff from a basin due to a given period of effective rainfall reflects the com combination of all physical characteristics of the basin so it this uh, last point is saying that when the rainfall occurs and you get the hydrograph from this uh, from the readings of the flow at the outlet it uh, it is the representation of all the physical characteristics like how much building is there what is the length of the watershed what is the how much grass land is there so this represents that okay now that i have told you all these four options which of these do you think is correct d we have bhai dharani d so for now d is having one vote Jugal Kishore Meher is saying C A on B is left. Let's see if someone is going for B. Okay, so no one is there for B. We have A B and sorry A C and D. I want to ask you guys this question. Even if you guys don't know, so in this kind of questions, what trick you have to use is when they are asking the correct, what is correct. and they have given the three that at least three are correct you try to find out what is wrong and in this question i have even highlighted what is wrong do you see do you see the answer now so dharni got the correct answer see throughout you would have if you have studied hydrology have you ever seen this kind of effective precipitation always you will see in top of your hydrograph is a nice kind of a rectangular you know effective hydrograph or effective runoff hydrograph you have never seen this kind of thing right so this option that is effective rainfall is not uniformly distributed within its duration is wrong 
and we are left only with one option that is D. Okay. All the other things are the assumptions or the theory related to your unit hydrograph. So, you know, if you even if you don't know these things, you can find identify through experience if you have solved some problems that this is this doesn't make sense. Okay. Any questions? Uh, sir, sir, can you please talk about the fourth option, the, the fourth uh, one? Okay, so even though it is uh, actually some kind of assumption, but I will explain you through an example. Okay, okay, let us see. Let's say you have a watershed that is small and some, uh, some rainfall is occurring on that watershed and you have a watershed that is big same amount of rainfall is occurring in this watershed same amount okay i'm not saying same intensity keep in mind i'm saying same amount if i were to plot i'm i'm going to plot two uh, two hydrographs direct run of hydrographs i want to know from you what do you think is the hydrograph corresponding to one particular uh, catchment? What do you think? Which one corresponds to which one? Uh, let me name them. Let's say this is A, this is B, this is 1, this is 2. A corresponds to 1 or 2 or B corresponds to 1 or 2. What do you think? Yes sir, I think A corresponding to A and B corresponding to 2. Correct. Why do you think that? Sir, uh, it, it seems like uh, there is a peak uh, which tells more key. There is a oh. peak. Yes, sir. So, okay, so you are going on the right track. So, let me explain. See, this watershed is small. So, when the rainfall falls on this, it will quickly come to the outlet. So we have a peak that is very quickly coming and it is also very high because water will very quickly, all the water is going to quickly come to the outlet. So the peak is also very high. On, on the other hand, this big watershed, it is going to have lesser peak because water will take time to come from there to here and also it is going to have extra, you know, bigger base time. Why? Because again, water will take more time from coming here, from there to here, and it will come slowly. Like it is not all of it is going to come very quickly here. Some part, this part will come first. This part will come first, and then we get a peak, small peak. On the other hand, let's say if I put buildings here in the watershed in this small watershed if i put some buildings and this big watershed also i put you know more buildings the nature of hydrograph is going to change the peak is going to occur more little bit maybe higher we cannot say anything about that but it is going to occur more quickly because there is less area to infiltrate also here more quickly right because yes. yeah so what what are these hydrographs telling us these hydrographs are telling us about you uh, know the physical characteristics of the basin right they will not tell exactly how the basin is looking like but they are telling us some information about the physical characteristic okay So let's go to the next question. So this is a numerical based type uh, question and uh, let's see if we can solve this. Oh, I get a bigger eraser. Okay. So we have to calculate phi index basically here. Three hour storm 
on a small drainage basin produced rainfall intensity of 3 cm per hour, 4.2 cm per hour and 2.9 cm per hour in successive hours. If the surface runoff due to the 3 or storm is 3 cm, then value of pi index will be. So basically they have given us rainfall hydrograph. Okay. So for first hour they have given that the rainfall intensity, not the excess rainfall intensity, but the rainfall intensity is 3.5, second it is 4.2, third it is 2.9. Okay, now and then they have given that the runoff is actually 3 centimeters total runoff. So what is the phi index? Phi index. So let, let, let's say what is the, how do you define phi index? Phi index is nothing but a constant infiltration rate. So in Horton, what we saw? Horton we saw that the infiltration was very high in the start and then becomes saturated. But phi index is saying that I don't care about the soil dryness, I am going to assume constant infiltration rate. More practically speaking, uh, uh, Horton is more accurate, but for simplicity, some models uh, adopt phi index and also based on the soil. So, if your uh, soil is very saturated, let's say, let's look at this Horton itself. See, when your soil is uh, the Gets soil saturated. is sandy, sir. Sorry? If the soil is sandy, sandy then also there is a uh, straight line, sir. If the soil is sandy, then also, then uh, actually it depends on the moisture concentration also. It can, it can, it can, you cannot say just by sandy soil. So let's look at the hot end itself. So when you keep on adding water in your double ring infiltrometer, and you may keep on making the soil saturated. After certain duration of your time, the infiltration rate becomes constant. And usually I mentioned that it is going to be the saturation hydraulic conductivity of your soil. But if you look at this thing, from this time onwards, the infiltration rate is constant. So we don't need to worry about the hot end parameters. We can use a constant infiltration rate. In some of some other cases also, like as uh, Anuj I think mentioned, if it is sand or some other soil in for which the decay constant is very high, that is the infiltration rate drops very fast. So this is like the drop, and when the decay constant, that is the K in that Horton expression, is very high, then it is going to be like this. Very uh, very suddenly, uh, it is going to drop to a very constant value. In that case also you can use the phi index. So that, that can, there can be a question that when is phi index actually, you know, we can, when can you use this phi index? So when K is high or the soil is already saturated, you know, then uh, in case of uh, sand as Anuj is saying, you know, so we can write those things. I, I don't think you should, uh, I'm not very sure about the sand, maybe you, you guys can check, but these two are the things that you can uh, uh, that I can confirm that uh, you know when k is very high, uh, when the decay constant is very high, or when the soil moisture content, the water content is very high or it is saturated. Okay, so that is phi index. Just uh, uh, we assume a constant infiltration rate. Okay, what is the formula for phi index? Phi index is precipitation minus runoff divided by effective precipitation. So, uh, and this precipitation, sorry, this is the precipitation, it is when the, maybe it will be better if I show you through example, yeah, because it's always a little hard for me to explain this fine. So, let's calculate directly, phi is equal to P minus R by T E. So, for now, let's say that phi is less than all these intensities 2.9, 3.4, 4.2. Then all these uh, rainfalls 
all these events are going to contribute to your effective runoff right so those things will be included whatever the intensity of your rainfall that is more than your phi index will be included in the calculation of phi index so what is phi now 3.5 into 1 because it is per per hour and we have 1 hour 3 hour storm we have so 3.5 into 1 plus 4.2 into 1 plus 2.9 into 1 minus 3 divided by the effective time this time also corresponds to whatever intensity is more than 5 so for now we have assumed that phi is very low let's say it is 1 all these things are uh, you know all these things are more than 1 so we are going to have 3 here so can anyone calculate and tell me what is the answer for this Two point five three. Okay, good. 2.533 uh, centimeters per hour. Yes, Pallavi also have given the answer. So, phi index is 2.533. Now, what was our initial assumption? Our initial assumption was that phi index is less than all these three infilt uh, the precipitation rates. And that is actually coming true. So, I just for ex for example I told that let's assume that phi is equal to 1 but your initial assumption should start with uh, by stating that let's assume that phi is less than all the present precipitation uh, intensities then if, if in that case let's say if it was uh, not 2.53 which is less than all the three it was 3 then what we would have done we would have calculated the phi index again but this time while calculating we would have ignored the 2.9 centimeter and we would have ignored this duration also so how would uh, how it would have looked like 3.5 into 1 plus 4.2 into 1 minus 3 divided by 2 and then we would have gotten some value and then we would have checked that whether the value now is lying between 3.5 and 2.9 or not and then again uh, you know we keep on doing this iteration till we satisfy our uh, initial assumption of calculation and then we get the final answer so just to summarize first what we assume i will write it here better i will write it here first what we assume that phi is less than 2.9 and we got the answer 2.533 second if if you you get the phi, uh, phi of uh, let's say if you got the phi of 3 then what you are going to assume in your uh, second iteration that phi is 3 and so our new phi the phi that we are going to calculate now is going to be equal to 3 and then you are going to ignore this and then use these things and then let's say again you got some phi that is the third iteration 3.6 then you will be left with only 4.2 and 1 hour precipitation then in that case this is your assumption uh, or basically your assumption is that in the second case that your phi is greater than 2.9 and less than 3.5 and in this case your assumption before calculation is your phi is greater than 3.5 and less than 4.2 so even if you don't get in the second uh, iteration uh, you got the first iteration value 3 but even if you don't get the second iteration value as 3 but as 3.2 you can stop there because it is under your uh, you know limitation or under your initial assumption then you don't have to go here and do the calculation again I hope I was able to make my point. Maybe uh, we'll take some other time. Uh, whenever we get to teach hydrology, we'll take some example where we have to actually do some iterations. I didn't know that we are not going to be doing any more iterations and in first iteration itself, we are going to get the solution. Yeah, but so, yeah, if you have any doubt from the explanation that I gave, you can ask. Maybe I'll try to explain again. 
सर आई वॉन्ट टू सर ये इन प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ बट वेन वी यूज इज हाई इंडेक्स सर I don't know. See, uh, in practical, we don't know actually uh, based on the soil characteristics. We will know the decay constant and all. But one simple example is that when you, uh, when your area or where your watershed received just half an hour back, it has received some very, you know, huge rainfall, and all the water has saturated the soil. now if you put more water what is going to happen it is going to go inside with a concentrate that is your uh, saturated saturation hydraulic conductivity in that case you don't need to have this kind of varying infiltration rate right in that case when it is constant you can directly use the phi index just put the phi value is equal to kh and you can get the value of your infiltration so that is one of the examples when you can use this Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so it's already cross uh, one hour, but let's take one last question. This is a very simple question, actually. Uh, if you have done any kind of example, or if if you have understood this concept that I told about linear response and time invariance, then you will be able to answer this question. A two-hour Strom hydrograph. as 5 units of direct runoff let me make it simple 5 cm of effective excess precipitation okay the 2 hour unit hydrograph for this storm can be obtained by dividing the ordinates of the storm hydrograph by how much we had a 2 hour direct runoff hydrograph which so this was 2 hour and the effective precipitation was 5 cm so by what amount should i divide the ordinates of my direct run of hydrograph to get the unit hydrograph depth sir yes and what is the value 5 sir exactly B. So someone has Dharani has said B. Dharani, do you understand this now, or should I, you know? Tell? Yes, sir. I understood, sir. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, guys. So that's all for today's session. Uh, let's meet again on Sunday. Probably we have Thanks. different topic that uh, that day. But whenever we come back mm -hmm. to hydrology, again, okay, yeah. No, thank you. Sir. Whenever we come back to sir. hydrology again, we'll discuss this. Yeah. So will you share this? uh workload uh, ppt post ppt okay i can share i will so i cannot share directly this to you so, uh, what i will do is i will put a link so that you can download from from this youtube channel you can download this because uh, i don't think ppt uh, is something you will get from the nptel portal okay okay so i'll uh, you can you. check the link in the thing i will try to put it there okay okay Thank okay. you, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, sir, uh, yes. the placement of civil engineering in IITs are good or not, sir? <laughs> so, unfortunately, in IITs also, IITs, NITs, everywhere, civil engineering placement is not not good. Only it is L and T. Okay, just a minute. I have to use. Okay, okay, sir. Yeah. Then we have to prepare for government only, na, sir. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. You prepare for gate, ESC. Yeah, that is the only. If you want, uh, you know, to settle fast, you have to prepare for them. Only. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. So next class, what topic will be discussed, sir? Uh, next class. So uh, it was. Was it not shared? I I also have to check what is the topic. Uh, sir, it is shared on the website, sir. So what is uh, the topic? Soil mechanics and soil stabilization, sir. Okay, so next will be soil mechanics, but I will take only on Sundays. So I I have probably some different topics. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Everything is shared on the website, sir. Okay. okay. So you can probably check the website. I don't know who asked this question, but yeah. Okay. 
thank you guys uh, have a good night thank you sir okay so someone okay. has shared the link in the website you guys i will wait a little while so that anyone who want someone who wanted to see you know you can click on the link and check i i myself also will click on the link so this is what you will see you go to civil engineering and these are the you know these are the sessions okay so my session is soil mechanics only okay good yeah. so next time i will be discussing soil mechanics okay guys thanks